Excellencies, the ministers in the dais, Sri Ram Madhavji and uh, the distinguished members of the organizing committee, respected delegates, ladies and gentlemen, namaskar and good evening. I have the great honor and privilege to address this fourth Indian Ocean Conference being held in this beautiful, friendly country, the Maldives. I would like to express my sincere thanks to the government of the Maldives, the Foreign Service Institute of Maldives, the India Foundation, and yes, Rajaratnam School of International Studies, Singapore, for organizing this conference and inviting me to be a part of this important event. The theme of the conference, checkering the Indian Ocean region, traditional and non-traditional challenges, is highly relevant in view of the great significance of the Indian Ocean and its security. The organizers deserve appreciation for creating such a prominent platform for deliberations on the theme of common interest. I am here today bringing the best wishes of the people of the land of Sagarmatha, the Mount Everest, the highest place of the earth to the people of the deep Sagar, the Indian Ocean. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, we all are aware of the glory and magnificence of the Indian Ocean. This ocean is the source of nourishment to a greater number of human beings, animals, and plants. It is also a bedrock for the development of great civilizations, cultures, and dynamic commercial and economic activities. The vast ocean sprawling from Australia in the east to the Arabian Gulf to South Africa is replete with precious resources of one sort or other. It is an important passage for international trade as a large portion of such trade from the Pacific to the Atlantic and in between them passes through this region. It is the route for trade of more than half of the world's seaborne oil, accommodating 23 of the world's top 100 container ports, facilitating one third of the global trade. Likewise, 36 laterals and 14 adjacent interland estuaries are related to the Indian Ocean, making more than 35% of the world's population dependent on it. Thus, there is an inextricable linkage of these countries with this ocean. A large portion of the resources of the Indian Ocean region is yet to be explored. It is said that 60, more than 60% of the world's oil reserves and more than 27% of natural gas reserves find home in it. The abundance of huge resources has not only sustained life but also incidentally propelled trade and economic growth in the region. Despite being a landlocked country, the major share of Nepal's export and import trade is directly or indirectly dependent on transit through the Indian Ocean. Distinguished delegates, with the opportunities come the challenges. The Indian Ocean and the surrounding region face a host of non-traditional security threats, which include piracy, marine terrorism, climate change, illicit trafficking of drugs and weapons, human trafficking, natural disasters like tsunami, illegal migration, and interruption in freedom of navigation. Many of these challenges have severely affected the countries associated with the ocean. The island nations are facing existential threats due to climate change and the consequent rise of the sea level, unseasonal heavy rainfalls resulting into floods and landslides have been hitting Nepal and other countries every year, taking a heavy toll of precious lives and property caused by the phenomena of global warming. Similarly, threats of human trafficking, drugs and weapons smuggling and illegal migration have continued posing grave 
security threats. In this context, it is appropriate to pursue collective actions from the countries directly or indirectly linked to the ocean in order to addressing these challenges. Moreover, maritime security of the Indian Ocean should receive a due priority by all the governments concerned. It is important to note that the exist existing multilateral and regional architecture, Indian Ocean Rim Association, ASEAN Region Forum, East Asia Summit have all prioritized cooperation in maritime safety and security, trade and investment facilitation, and disaster risk management. In the South Asian region, initiatives taken such as this conference will prove instrumental in forging cooperation in regard to strengthening the security of the region. Excellencies, in Nepal's case, though Nepal is not directly linked with the ocean, the country is associated with it as major portion of Nepal's international trade passes through it. It is bearing to brunt of the adverse imp impacts of climate change without being a cause for it. So is the case of the Maldives and some other countries. Nepal believes that the rights of exploration, navigation, and utilization of the resources of this ocean can only be exercised when there is peace and security. Furthermore, it also holds that maritime security will continue to play a meaningful role in strengthening the blue economy, benefiting all the countries concerned. Nepal is in favor of peace, prosperity, and avoidance of international laws in relation to the use of IC. We support the architecture based on partnership, collaboration, and inclusiveness in this regard. I am confident that such arrangements would ensure the exploration, navigation, and utilization of the marine resources, sharing the benefits and use of IC to all states, including landlocked countries. In this context, I am happy to inform this August gathering that the government of Nepal has been working towards implementing the vision of connecting Nepal's mountains with the Indian Ocean with seamless connectivity of roads, railways, and waterways. Nepal is also in the process of bringing into operation its own commercial ships in international waters, hoisting Nepal's flag in the near future. We believe it will involve us directly to the Indian Ocean with much more focus on international trade and transit. There is one more dimension, the ecological interdependence between Himalayas and the Indian Ocean. In the context of climate change, the melting of glaciers results in the rise of sea level, which endangers the survival of the low-lying island states. So preserving the ecological balance in the Himalayas by addressing the adverse effects of climate change is in our common interest. The Himalayas have not only ecological values, they have been the source of civilization and a repository of traditional and indigenous knowledge. The government of Nepal, with a view to sensitizing the international community on the impact of climate change in the livelihoods of the people living in the mountains and the low-lying coastal and island states, will be hosting a dialogue on climate change and mountain ecology in the first quarter of next year within the framework of newly established Sagarmatha Sambad. We will invite you to attend the event once we finalize the details. As to the exploration and utilization of the marine resources under the high seas, Nepal is yet to take full advantage of these resources. Taking it into consideration, we urge the developed world for their support to the landlocked developing countries to enhance capacity for reaping the benefits of the sea. Ladies and gentlemen, I am pleased to inform you that Nepal is in the process of developing inland waterways in its big rivers in cooperation with India in a way to connect Nepal's rivers with the sea for the movement of its export and import. It believes that effective waterways as a means of transport can greatly facilitate smooth economical and fast trade 
and transit. Once Nepal is able to do so, we will also be effectively linked with the Indian Ocean. At this moment, it would be relevant to recall the decision of the fourth BIMSTEC summit held in Kathmandu in 2018, which emphasized the importance of blue economy. The summit agreed to cooperate in this sector for the sustainable development in the region, paying due considerations to the special needs and circumstances of the landlocked member states. Distinguished delegates, when we discuss about the sea, we needn't need to do in a holistic manner. There is no doubt that mountaining, maintaining security of the ocean is the paramount importance. So is removing obstacles and addressing challenges of various sorts. What is more for the landlocked states like Nepal is to help remove their difficulties so that this natural handicap would not become an obstacle for them, their development. Equally important is that the resources of, the, of and benefits from the oceans and seas should be equally shared with all countries associated with them. Then only we will create robust cooperation, including for their security and resolution of the problems. Nepal is ready to cooperate with all other countries associated with this region in strengthening security of the Indian Ocean and addressing the challenges facing it in whatever way possible. Before I conclude, I once again would like to extend thanks to the organizing committee for hosting this conference on a relevant theme which interests all coastal and landlocked countries. I wish the conference a grand success. Thank you.